what is going on guys? It's your boy Sessor here. There's a video here today. I'm bringing you guys another video on how to create your own little brand. We're gonna put a little title on this video. Uh, basically, I think the first one I ever did was sort of uh, how to get your own first design client or how to get your first design client from scratch, which is a really, really cool, well-received video. And I thought people might actually care about my opinion. So I'm gonna make another video here today being how to make your own or how to create your own income, right, as a freelance designer. And the reason why I use the word income is because I want this to be for people who really choose to like stick with this and really understand it and not just kind of like you know make money here and there which is fine right that's like that's that's what a hobby is called but some people want to really do this and like for myself i'm going to tell you guys my shared experience and how i can create my own good income and i of course i live at home and stuff like i need a little q a session i do live at home 21 years old i just plan on moving out this year um so it's kind of like it's just one of those things that I feel like I should just share and just kind of give you guys my little you know trip down the the memory lane and how I sort of build the brand that I have today and how I'm able to sell things online today and how to basically get a couple dollars in your pocket while doing that as well. So I'm going to start off right with pre-made designs. Now, pre-made designs, you guys all know, they're basically like pre-made designs that you create on your own time and it's a great great method of practice and it's also something that's really cool to think about right some people don't think about it like this some people think about pre-made designs as something that they just do to make money for they sell it and they sort of just leave it being that only but the way that i look at pre-made designs personally is progression i feel like it's a very very cool way to show your audience that you might already have or that you're trying to build yourself your sort of fan base the word progression right you want to see progression they can see progress they can see sort of like a reason as to why you charge things i would call it not the word reason but i'd probably call it the word proof of like concept of like what why you price the money you do i think that's a way to put it so personally i do have a sort of like little uh november to january 8th of 2018 basically like the most recent uh mascot that i've done and also the one of the first ones i've ever done as well so personally i think you can see a very very big difference in change of quality uh, you can see it in change of quality of line work, color, and the reason why I did this, and I wanted to show you guys really quickly, and also kind of give you more like further example, is because for one, of course, I know some some people might not know the culture of like logo design, or even know the the premise of you know what a mascot really is. So they might not really be able to like how like see how we see it, like a difference between you know from November twentieth to January eighth. They might not really see what the reasoning or what the differences are but someone who's a little more trained and they might understand it and that's kind of like why i put this in here so if you guys want a really quick example for those individuals if you look at the november 20th one you can see my line work and my colors are very bland they're just very simple yellow white and black and as well as the line work itself meaning the black lines that you guys see are not really detailed and they're not really sort of you know exaggerated or don't have any kind of character or style to them and then you can slowly see the transition between uh april 21st you can see more of a uh i would call it just like negative space being used um but as well as i also realized that my perspectives were really kind of off in a way as well and then you kind of get to the september 26th one where you can get a little more bit of line work going in right you can see i kind of like use like the negative space in the eyes and you sort of like get a little more you know fluid with the colors and like using sh uh, shades um and just using just different kind of colors right but you get a lot of difference when you look at the December 1st, uh, excuse me, December 4th one, which I've done a lot of mascots in between September and December. And I just showed you guys this one because it's one of my favorite ones of that time. And you can see just like the use of this really nice blue color, uh, the line work actually has not it's just not black right it's like has a blue tint to it and everything just really kind of has a uniform fit to it now personally i think the the facial structures could have been done a little bit better however that was that right and then the one that i've done most currently uh it would be the january 8th one where it's a, a nice little cool tiger and i think it's really really awesome also the thing i want to point out as well as all my pre-mades have sold besides one of them so what i'm going to tell you guys is it really does matter when you kind of show you have a storyline when it comes to your pre-mains that's why i say if you're going to start and it, like also one thing as well is how do you say it it's like i said it's a great method, method of practice uh you can be done on your own time i know a lot of people kind of stress out on a sort of like client works where you have to get a like a date and like you start getting frustrated with the client or you know that's i wouldn't recommend that by the way but you, it happens right you get frustrated and you're just like oh, i just don't want to work on this anymore and your work ethic and your work quality quality excuse me is not the best and what happens is your client will see it and then they'll ask for a refund or they'll ask for like a revision and you're just done with the client you're just like ah oh, you know what whatever whatever and then you just sort of refund the money and that's all that time wasted uh that happens it's happened to me and i personally say that and i just know that the client is is always right right to an extent 
understand that don't put yourself through hell because you just want the money for it sometimes you just have to understand like hey man i really can't get this concept or can we work on something different do not be afraid to ask that now one other question you might ask yourself is how do you sell the pre-made design and how do you really ask yourself hey what do i price this as and i would personally tell you is sort of like be reasonable but not desperate right now this might be a little weird to you and i might have a little bit of not i wouldn't call it hate but a little bit of disagreement this is a very flexible conversation right how you price your work i personally believe you should charge an hourly rate now it's not just about how much time you spend on it i know that personally i had a conversation with a friend named aaron and he pointed that out very clearly to me and i already kind of knew but i didn't want to like just you know kind of say yeah you know but i kind of want to just sell it right there and then that's something that's kind of struggling right i promise you that there's a price out there for everyone for the quality of work that you do and i'm going to tell you that because that's a damn truth i mean there's like seven billion people on the planet right um but let's just think about that right anyway regardless is how do you sell it i personally do it by how i personally like how much time i personally spent on the actual concept itself so for me i spent about maybe like three to four hours maybe at most five hours on my premium mascots and that's kind of like an all togetherness right in document probably two to three hours so for me i say like twenty dollars an hour is a pretty okay rate for just some practice now you got to remember to yourself that this i would call premium designs i do personally call them practice i don't call them you know like a finalization because there's some things that i know for sure sure that I could fix but I'm just like I'm so frustrated with it and it's on my own time and kind of doing it in one session is just kind of fun for me it's therapeutic for me and I come out with a really cool concept that's just good enough for people to purchase it and to enjoy it and make brands out of it so with that being said I kind of would suggest you to maybe do it hourly but also the experience right for my first mascot that I ever did right that November 20th one I charged around I think it was $30 for that and I think I sold it at 25 telling people like hey I lowered the price down it's now $25 and someone bought it for $25 and not $30. The one I've currently did for the Tiger one sold for $70, which is pretty dang good. So there's is there is that difference of timeline and in between each two. If you didn't see the difference, they were big differences in how much they cost. Now, some people nowadays will tell me, like, hey man, you charge so much more for your logos, but I personally do believe that it's being reasonable as well. I know how much time I spent on it. I know how much time that I chose to sort of, or I, excuse me, I would say how much I sort of paid attention to things I knew I wanted to do and rather than fix, there are those things. And that's what I mean by being reasonable and not desperate. So that was kind of like my way of kind of like covering how I say that, right? But as well as being incredibly, incredibly honest. So if you find yourself doing a pre-made design and like whatever it actually might happen to be, it does not have to be a mascot logo. Make sure you understand that it could be something like, I don't know, something crazy as logo marks. I know in the past I've done logo marks as in just like random letters of letter A's or letter C's or whatever my favorite letter was. Just trying to like find, exp I, I see people call them like, uh, you know, let's just say S logo exploration, right? There's those, those, those little things called explorations. And then some people might really like your little random logo mark and they might say, hey, how much do you want to charge for it? You know? Those are things that do happen to people, but they don't really call themselves probably like, you know, pre-made designers or something like that, right? They just sort of like make something, tweet it out, and then if someone happens to say, you know, otherwise, like, hey, can I purchase it? They can purchase it, right? But if you put the words, you know, hey, pre-made design on this or um, up for sale, DM me if you're interested or email me if you're interested, that might actually bring the interest of people buying it. They might actually look at it through their timeline and say, oh my God, this is super cool. I wish I can have it because you don't ever even have like the that little bit of information that that might be actually purchasable and that's just something that someone from the outside perspective is saying to themselves hey uh they're so interested in your design they ask for someone or they ask themselves that they can purchase it from you that's something that's really really cool about like sort of like designs overall it's it catches people's experience and they might actually really fall in love with it so please please for the love of god if you want to be a premium designer or sell your designs maybe just put that little interest in there so people just know that that is available and is a thing to do but that's not the entire point. What I'm going to say to yourself, right, if you're going to find yourself doing a premium design, whatever it may be, we're going to go with this again, even if, it's, even if it's like a banner design, I don't know, like anything that you might find, like wallpapers, who the heck knows, right? Whatever you want to sell and that you've done for practice, let's say you spend two, like two hours on it, right? Um, let's just say you charge, I don't know, $10 an hour on it. Let's just say your practice was worth $10 an hour because of my experience and whatever other tax you want to put on it, right? So you're going to say, all right, I'm going to sell this mark for $20, but then you you gotta put like like i said experience so we'll, we'll, we'll call it experience tax uh let's just say and well, why not just add like half of an hour worth in there so now it's 25 dollars. now let's say how good is the concept and how great do you think other people would find like really cool interest in it i don't know like think about it as in an animal right how many people want like a like a an animal of an ant 
right? I don't know if I sold a mascot ant logo for, I don't know, like $50. Is it really going to sell just like even this, even in the sense of the animal itself, but what if I sold this really cool, aggressive tiger that was just super awesome? You know what I mean? You see, you see what I'm trying to say that? Um, so maybe if it's a really cool and attractive design that you know for sure that so many people will be super interested in, maybe bump it up even right there and then, right? That kind of like gets rid of the people who want it just to have it and also gets the people who really want it to grab it from you. And like really, you want your work to also be out there, right? You want it to be something that someone else sees that way someone else can get a client from you and that will help like sort of progress rest the 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 income that you might actually end up getting so out of like all the ways to make money as a freelance designer i would personally say pre-made designs happen to be one of my favorites because it works for me and that's not saying that's going to work for you or all the above it might actually just i don't know who the heck knows maybe you might find your your love and passion doing work on your own time not having clients i mean clients should please for the love of god take clients as well but i'm just saying right doing work on your own time for practice is a lot more fun than the pressures of having someone else's opinion like I don't mean that in the sense of like clients are the worst thing in the universe no but I'm just saying practicing is kind of fun right and also I would say to the people who are out there who are just watching this video for some reason that are trying to figure out why designers might price their work so quote-unquote expensive is because you're paying for their experience experience is expensive there's that thing right there is that level of you know how much time someone might have spent on something how much detail that whatever you might be looking at price wise you might not understand because your eye is not not even the word of train but it's not actually just you're not you're just not seeing it it might actually be the word trained your eye is not trained to see why things might be priced the way they are because any designer who saw my premium designs from November 12th uh, excuse me 20th 2016 probably wouldn't say that hey it's the same quality of work that you're doing now so if premium design is probably something you want to find yourself doing it's something that you probably find interesting give it a shot you might not know that premium designs is probably like your future who knows I'm pretty sure there's someone out there who makes a gosh darn living having fun enjoying what they want to do for practice you know sort of making their skills super super fine tuned just making themselves better out there who's making a lot of money doing so so who knows maybe that could be you now, if something like pre-made designs is not for you, that is okay. If you want to keep your practices safe and just like sacred and you want all your people to find like the finalist images of the world, the polished designs, there's no harm in that whatsoever. I'm not going to say it's not going to be the best or the worst way of building a brand. I'm just saying showing a little progression here and there is probably a little fun to do for your fans to sort of build a storyline with you, but I'm sure they'll see your progression through your final images as well. So if pre-made designs is not something that you're, uh, I guess, not capable of doing, but something you're not interested in doing, that is okay because there's way more ways to do so and there's one other way personally that I like to choose to do it as well and that way would actually be using a digital store even your own website if you might find yourself saying like my website's super dull I want more than a portfolio maybe make a store and sell your own design assets now what I mean by design assets are sort of things that you probably find yourself using very consistently you might have created yourself that you might have just like really said to yourself like this is what makes my design what it is it might be a cool stock that you might use for lighting it might be that this really cool weird quirky fun colorful abstract mess of whatever goodness but you make it look so good and the final result is so well received through your fans and whatnot you might find yourself being able to sell that kind of stuff now with that being said is you should be very very honest in what you sell you should definitely not ever google any images or anything like that and this is the this video by the way is not trying to call anyone out but do not sell things that are not yours those stocks that you find on Google are not actually yours, even if they say, hey, it's a free stock. They don't mean, hey, it's free for you to go ahead and sell. You know what I mean? Just be sure you're not one of those people who do that. I'm sure that is that wave is out there or not like any low, in, excuse me, any no longer in practice. How do I say that? It's no longer in practice, right? No one does it anymore. But if you find yourself doing this really cool thing that people really, really like, try to share with other individuals, right? You might have just kind of make a little package. For me, that might have been my brush stock. My brush stock was something that I love to use brushes in, in my like final images and my, 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 my tutorials and stuff like that. People really like that kind of stuff. And so pretty much I said, hey, let's just kind of create a cool pack out of it. So I called it the brush pack, the stock brush pack. Some of you might have it, somebody might know of it, whatever the case may be. It's a really cool pack that I only sold for $5. And it was a very fair price for me. And it's a fair price for everyone else as well out there because it's over 600 plus purchases. And it's also just something that's really honest and really fun to use. And 
I would honestly tell you guys to be sure when you're gonna sell something, make sure it's yours, of course, but even add a little bit of extra fling to it, right? For me, my brush pack has a little perk to it, so if you do purchase the pack itself, I'm not trying to sell it, by the way, I'm trying to give you ideas, Um, it, but I'm still kind of selling it in a way. You're probably like, oh crap, this is pretty cool. This is why, right? Because I have a perk to it. So the perk for me was, hey, when I actually, you know, whenever you purchase this, I know for me, personally, I think updates are something that should be free. Right, and why do I say that? It's just we're not like I'm not talking about a bit video games stuff like that, but you know, video games like they have updates that are pretty much for free, and they have DLC that you can purchase like, buy because it's completely different, right? So I'm gonna think of that in the same way of doing like I don't know brush stocks. For me, I know brushes themselves are trendy in a way. Some lighting brushes might be really cool then, and just not gonna be like cool, you know, in the future, and that's fine, right? So kind of like make maybe make a, an effort to saying, hey, whenever I kind of update my pack, I'll give it to you guys for free as well. And it's not for, like giving it to free for free but it's also saying hey i'm gonna update my brush pack so right there that's a little perk and someone's like hey i'm gonna forever get you know updates until that person maybe makes a new volume or a new something else that is so much better that they know for sure they have to take it out of that context of having in that first product now i am not saying that's the only way to do it i'm not saying you have to the only way to sell something is to make things for free if they purchase it now they get something later on for free no that's kind of like my way of doing things i'm not saying that you're not allowed to do that go for it man go for it. if someone likes your work likes the content the design assets that you choose to put out then why the hell not right but i'm just saying for instance for me the everything pack where they can purchase one thing flat and they get everything next for free the reason why i do that you might be saying to yourself dude you're losing so much money they can purchase for 30 dollars and then that's it that's all you get right there and then but for one be honest with yourself as all the things that you're putting out right now right going to be the same exact value of next year let's use the pre-made examples that i said before where i said i did that that one mascot way long ago for 25 dollars and now i'm charging 70 dollars that's going to be the same exact thing about your store later on we're going to take it down right you're going to probably take it down but who the heck knows somebody might be at that level right there and then it can see the progression so for me the way i look at the everything pack is sort of like a really big just a bunch of experience is what i look at the everything pack as that's what other people look at it as well and i'm not trying to sell it as well again but i'm just trying to show you my construction of a product now i feel like you should really truly if you're going to want to sell something put some effort into figuring out what kind of perk or what kind of something you can make it that you're just not selling just the asset itself even though that might be good enough but what's going to push your sales and push the flow and the hype and just keep the hype up what is that going to be i have no clue for you but you probably have an idea you're just like holy crap so you're just giving me a brilliant idea and then guess what guess who's going to get some money out of it and it's not just making money it's just also helping people as well right my products are solely to help people as well like i just said it's a big bundle of experience so whatever your idea might be put it to use and you might actually make some pretty cool killer income for yourself support yourself and then make even cooler things and just be super happy about life right that's the whole that's what is it called like the, the trifecta what the heck is it called maybe someone knows what i'm talking about but anyway i think those two things right the second one is pretty short but it's pretty honest it's pretty cut you know cut kind of kind of cut clear you got to think about what product you might want to be selling you might sell pre-made so, excuse me you might sell pre-made psds i would call them right you might sell i wouldn't say pre-made you're probably going to sell something that got like what if your your tweet got like 300 freaking likes and like 100 you know retweets on this project that you did for some individual right and they might not ever end up using it but you did it for fun you just did it for whatever you might say to yourself dude i can totally if someone liked it so much, maybe they want to know how I did it. You can sell your PSD. People sell their work. They sell their work in the actual file itself, so you can study exactly what you did. Now, if you're going to be one of those individuals who do that, do not be... Uh, do not be just freaked out or or get super emotional about someone using your methods. I mean, you're selling your methods, right? So you can't really push the, uh, the oh my god, you're doing just... Why are you making something that looks just like mine? It might look just like yours, but they're trying to... They're experiencing exactly what they purchased, right? They're studying exactly what you did, and they're giving it a shot. So if you're going to sell your PSDs, do not be... <laughs> Uh, do not be, I guess you would say, uh, offended by someone who chooses to purchase your PSD, work with it, and understand how you do it, and then give it a shot. There's no wrong in that for me, I believe, personally, but... That does not also mean you can't privately tell them, hey man, make sure you kind of maybe fine tune it in your own way. But thank you so much for purchasing this stuff and yada yada yada. There's there's this fine lines that I'm not entirely sure how I you know how I would I would say it clearly. But just be sure that you can do something like that as well. But also do not be kind of like I said offended by people who choose to use your practices and as their own, right? And you'll see you'll see it in some people you'll see it in some people. Um, that's just simply because they're studying it, right? So if that is for interest for you, hopefully one day you can say you can come back to this video and be like, yo, Sesso. So 
thank you so much for kind of helping me figure out how I can sort of support myself more, just not by getting clients alone. Because that's not the only way, right? That is not the only way. There's a, probably a tons of other ways. So personally, if you probably have a different way, uh, tell me, like, let me know what it is. I believe the word uh, income, right? Like I said in the beginning of the video, how to make a passive income. I think making an income as a freelance designer happens to be having multiple sources of that money, right? Multiple sources of money. So for me, pre-made designs plus clients plus you know a, a, a design asset store, all those combined are a really cool way for me to make a nice passive income, right? That was my conclusion kind of sentence, and I hope for gosh that it helps someone out there. And hopefully these videos here you guys do enjoy. So that's pretty much it for me today. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I will talk to you guys next Sunday. And also, I was thinking of an idea of having some sort of upload for every single day of next month. I'm going to hint it out there because I feel like I really want to do it for you guys. And it's going to be about logos, maybe A through Z, call, you know, hint. If you guys haven't been on my live streams, I've talked about it a little bit. But thank you guys so very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Sesso HQ out. Do not get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Go ahead and go make that passive income, dude. <laughs> much love.